All right, so let's play with these coordinate maps and these linear combination maps. Example 2.4.1, let's take V equal P3. So P3 polynomials of degree three or less. I want to give an explicit formula for phi of b, the coordinate maps, and psi of b, the linear combination map, for the following basis. So they do depend on a choice of basis. Um, let's start with the standard basis. I'm going to start with a random polynomial of degree 3 or less. So I'm going to go up to a3, x3. All right, so I need to write it as a linear combination of this. It's almost done for me. I just need to add one. And so if I look at CP1 of P of X, that's going to give you A0, A1, A2, A3. Right, psi of b is not that inter interesting. It's pretty straightforward, but let's write it on, nonetheless. If I have, um, let me use b, b1, b2, b3, b4. That's going to just take b1 multiplied by the first basis, b2 multiplied by the second basis element, b3 by the third. Sorry, I said third, so I wrote three, but the third has degree two, and then b4 x3. All right, so those are the two maps if you pick the standard basis. Now, if you have a standard basis like in P3, this map is very natural. It's pretty straightforward, right? But now if I choose a slightly weirder basis, then I'm going to have to work harder. All right, so if I write again, a0 plus A1x plus A2x squared plus A3x3. So I want to write this as a linear combination of these four elements. So um, let me use, I guess, C because that's what we used in the definition. So I want C1 times 1. I want C2 times x plus 1. I want C3 times x squared plus 1 and I want C4 times x cubed plus 1. All right, so if I spell this out, I'm going to get um, C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 as my constant. And then the rest is pretty standard. And so that means I'm going to need um, A0 to be C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4. I'm going to need, well, actually, it's the other way around. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't like the way I said it. But what, what I wrote was correct, so you don't have to erase it. But what I, I like to say that these are the ones we're looking for. So their sum has to be equal to A0. Um, C2 should be equal to A1. C3 should be equal to A2 and C4 should be equal to A3. And so we solve this. I mean, these three are completely settled, so I just have to find what C1 is here. Sorry. So I get that C1 is A0 minus C2 minus C3 minus C4, and so that's A0 minus A1 minus A2 minus A3. All right, so the coordinate basis vector, coordinate vector, coordinate maps for A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared plus A3x cubed. That's going to give you C1, C2, C3 by definition. And so C1, we said, was A0 minus A1 minus A2 minus A3. And then the other ones are just A1, A2, A3. All right, so that's the coordinate map. All right, and then I asked for 
the inverse as well. I asked for psi of b. So this is 5b. And then psi of b is going to take c1, c2, c3, c4, and just send it to c1 times 1 plus c2 times x plus 1 plus c3 times x squared plus 1 plus c4 times x cubed plus 1. All right, so let me say, I mean, I hope it's clear at this point, this is a very natural, simple map. This one you have to work on. You usually get a system to solve, and if I'm kind, it's not so bad, <laughs> usually. <laughs> For an exam, it won't be too bad. Um, yeah. All right, note that the maps psi of B depend on a choice of a basis. Different bases would give you different isomorphism, and you can see it here. Right, this one was more straightforward. This one was a bit more involved. The first component was a bit more um, complicated. But really, this basis is not complicated. If I give you a complicated basis, it would be even more complicated. 